Hello internet. I meant to do these a while ago. This is going to be a wrap up video. It is going to contain all the books I read in July and August. I filmed the one for July, but then the file got lost, then I found it, then I couldn't edit it, then I got like all this stuff on my computer, and I'm just gonna refilm everything right now one time. So just so you know, so this is clear, this is the wrap up for both July and August. Let us get started with July. So in the month of July, I was trying to unhaul a lot of books that I didn't want, and I DNF'd a couple books so I'm going to talk about the few books that I DNF first and then I'll go into July's wrap up. So the first book that I DNF'd is going to be Monsterologist by Rick Yancey. I was not a fan of this. I got part way through and realized this was not the book for me. This book is about a monsterologist and it's told from the perspective of his little apprentice who is a 12 year old boy. It is a retelling from the 90 year old man. He's finally sitting down and telling his story of what it was like when he was 12 and he was this apprentice of the monsterologist. When I started it I was like oh okay this will be pretty cool but then I realized I don't like the monsterologist. He was a jerk. He did not treat this boy well. He only cared about himself which is all fine and dandy but you could tell the boy didn't realize that at the beginning. Like this guy's just thinking of him as this awesome character and then there was the problem of the boy itself. Like I said, this is a 90 year old man telling the story of his 12 year old self. So some of his actions when he's retelling the story aren't consistent. He's not scared when he should be. He's not frightened or hesitant when he should be. And it's already established that this kid feels and felt that way. But it clearly felt like a story versus this is this kid's life and we're empathizing with it like there would be actions where he would see this gruesome scene and you would hear like the narrator old guy saying oh yeah i was really terrified but then he proceeds to act as if he was not terrified at all and you're not even getting the sense that it's the kid pretending or anything like that it just feels disconnected because you realize this is not the 12 year old kid you're listening to, but the nine year old man remembering what he was like when he was 12. So that was a little um, disconcerting. Then when I stopped, it was a part where it was basically, I didn't know if the monsterologist would love me. There's this part right before they get into the main part of the book where it basically says, oh, I wasn't sure about the monsterologist. I wasn't sure if he would trade me up for his work. And from the very beginning, you can tell that that's exactly what the monsterologist would do is he would trade this young kid for the sake of his work and for the sake of being noticed and having notoriety. And just knowing that this was the type of book I was reading where the main character was going to seek a role model in a person who clearly didn't deserve it and not even be able to tell that this guy was using him or did not care about his well-being. I just didn't want to be there for that story. I didn't want to see this kid's heartbreak. I didn't want to see him look up to a person who obviously didn't care about him. So I DNF that. Next we have Superhuman by Michael Carroll. I had a little hesitation. I got a lot farther in this one, but then I stopped when I realized that it was going to do exactly what I thought it was going to do. So this is a in a world where certain people can have superpowers. Uh, there's like a superpower job, you know, just superhero world. And this is basically just an action movie. It is the novel by Michael Bay. All that happens is a bunch of action scenes, a bunch of explosions. I can't even tell you what the plot is of this book even though I got like a third of the way in because nothing happens other than explosions and people punching other people out. There's no character development. There's no promise of character development. There is just, oh here's an action scene. Okay we're gonna wait for a second. Oh here's another action scene. Oh we're gonna prop for the next action scene. And there was nothing to do with the characters. Like the characters were some blank slated thing and I'm sorry but that doesn't work in a book you can't just throw me like all these heavily explained action scenes without giving me a reason to care about the characters in it it might work for media and for movie but it doesn't work for a book and the last book that I DNF is going to be Legacy of Kings by Eleanor Herman now this one I DNF for a personal reason I 
personally do not prefer Greco-Roman epic story t styles. While I love the stories that go behind them and the mythos that go into them, I do not like the atmosphere and the style of writing that goes into the written word of them. And this had that same sort of Greco-Roman air to it. I cannot fully explain what it is that I don't like about it. It simply makes me uncomfortable and I don't like that storytelling style. So I knew I wasn't going to enjoy this book when already I had so many things against it and it wasn't compelling me to stick through my personal distaste for the sake of the story. So now on to books that I actually read and finished all the way through in the month of July. First we have The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I really really enjoyed this book. I think the best description for this book is the way that they describe The Night Circus as being a magical thing that no one will fully comprehend and understand that is how you're going to feel after you read this book you go into the book and you're like oh I'm gonna read this book I'm gonna come out of it and I'm gonna know what went on but when you finish this book you know what went on but at the same time you realize you don't know everything like there were so many secrets and little back corners that you would never know the full story of the night circus just like you would never know the actual event the night circus it's just impossible you go along you're wonderfied by the magic going but at the same time you understand hey maybe i won't understand everything at the end of this next we have heart of a samurai by margie perez this is based on a true story it is about a young japanese boy who ends up getting stranded on a ship with a few of his other japanese fishermen they end up being taken in by an american whaler ship and he ends up traveling to america and learning more about the american culture it is a great story about a middleman where he is a kid trying to figure out how to navigate his way between both cultures the one he grew up with and he wants to love and respect because it is the one he knows and this new interesting culture he's never seen before so he is trying to blend these two cultures together in his person to take what's good and bad from both and it's just an intriguing story to see the cultural clashes that this guy goes through he's more of a blank slate than anything else he's just there to witness the world going on around him and kind of explain how he feels about it but it was lovely all the same then the next book is by stan lee stuart moore andy tong it's the Zodiac Legacy Convergence, this is book one. It is about a Chinese American who is currently on a school field trip in China and he is going through this museum. He ends up getting wrapped into this huge conspiracy fight battle sort of thing where this one man is trying to take all the powers of all the 12 zodiacs into himself so that he can make sure that he controls the world around him because these zodiacs are very powerful. He ends up getting wrapped up in it and ends up fighting this other dude who basically just wants to take over the world. It is very very fascinating. It has pictures in it so I already loved it. One warning though sometimes these pictures don't match up with the book descriptions. They're like in between shots I guess and it frustrates me to no end because I kept thinking I wasn't reading the book right and I was skimming things and wasn't reading everything going on and all these action scenes only to come out find out that the pictures just didn't match up with some of the descriptions I read of what was going on in the fight so that's something to be warned but I definitely suggest this book it has an Asian cast of characters um, a diverse cast so that is something that I'm really happy to support I think we need more Asian superheroes. I mean, come on. Like, everyone needs a superhero to look up to. We need to stop letting people fall through the cracks just cause. Next, we have another superhero based book, and this is Sidekicked by John David Anderson. This is about a young boy, and he is in this sidekick program where a superhero kid gets paired up with a professional superhero so that they can kind of learn the ropes with an adult watching out for them. This um, particular sidekick that we follow is like a sensitive person where he, all of his senses are heightened times 10 so he doesn't really handle everything the way he is he's not a fighter one thing that I 
I love this book, but one thing that I didn't like was how narrow the view of superhero was. How superhero could only mean you fight physically, you punch people out. And I thought that was like really disappointing and lacking, especially when we have a superhero who is mentioned to be on an undercover trip. And this main kid feels bad all the time because he can't punch people, because he's sensitive to things around him. He can't eat certain things. He can't be in loud environments without getting irritated like stuff like that because of the way his senses work because of his superpower he is at a disadvantage and when it comes to like physical one-on-one -on -one, we're gonna like do combat and I just wish someone had pointed out to this kid that he would have been a great spy he would have been great at espionage but you never get that full relief it does have a good premise in it like a super villain comes back from the dead like he has to try to figure it out with all his other buddies that's great but at the end of the day i was still really disappointed that no one took this kid aside and this kid never realized that just because you can't go out and you can't one-on-one -on -one fight with someone that doesn't mean you're useless and that doesn't mean you don't have something to give to the table and his powers are amazing and i wish somebody had just pointed that out and made him realize that he doesn't have to be the stereotypical hero to still be an amazing hero next we have newt's emerald by garth nix this is kind of misleading for the summary so i'm not even going to go into that i'll tell you guys about that in its own book opinion video but it is about a young lady to a very high prominent family and a magical jewel from her family that is supposed to be inherited by her in a couple months gets stolen and since it's such a prized jewel she decides to go and find it as a part of the scheme to try to find who has stolen this jewel and where it is she dresses up like a man while still trying to figure out how to keep her lady figure and morals protected so that her reputation doesn't get ruined so she's trying to navigate both her lady life and trying to be a part of the city ton and then her also undercover trying to act as the perfect gentleman so she can find out who has stole from her family next we have my per new personal favorite book one that really really touched me and i feel like was written for me um and that is we are the ants by david hutcherson and this is about a boy who believes that the world only has 244 days left because he keeps getting abducted by aliens and one day the aliens tell him that the only way to save the world is in 144 days he has to press this button and he saves the world however he's going through a lot of personal problems with his life and he's not dealing with them very well and he kind of just wished there was a button that he could press that could save himself so it talks about like why he doesn't want to press the button or why he should press the button reasons that would do with this this might be triggering for some people if you're sensitive to topics of depression and suicide and like home abuse and sort of things like that uh, this very much focuses on mental health and the ideas behind it one of my favorite things about it was the main character in this book had a type of depression that was very similar to mine where it has a lot to do with the finality of the world and existential crisis and focusing a lot too much on that and not being able to live your life because of struggles like that there's so much i want to say on this book that i really just can't do in a wrap-up so I might go more into it like I said I can't really explain all of my feelings about this book now other than it was amazing and I am so glad I found this book we have a few others that I read in ebook so snow like ashes by Sarah Rosh this I like the book and I like the story in it but I was not a fan of most of the characters so this follows a young girl who is now a refugee and she is running. She lives in a world where there are eight kingdoms and in each kingdom has this magical MacGuffin that can only be controlled by the rulers of each kingdom depending on the gender of the original MacGuffin holder and the person in their bloodline. It's very specific magic let's say well she is now a refugee and she's running because the one of the seasonal kings the spring king destroyed her kingdom of winter and so they're trying to figure out how to reestablish their kingdom how to end this war get rid of the spring king and all of this fixed 
what I did love was I love this story I like the main character Mira she was pretty cool um like she was she was okay but I did not like any of the people that were she was forced to surround herself with because she was one of a couple refugees and it was very clear that these refugees did not care for her or care about her at all which is really odd when you find more things about like the history and all of that sort of stuff but they clearly did not care about her well-being enough other than she had to be alive at the end of the day but they didn't care about her as a person just she was some sort of object to them and they did not treat her right and i hated them all um and any refugee alongside of her was a piece of trash i'm sorry no and they had the dumbest love triangle in the world in this book so i will not be continuing with this series i will complain in more detail and rant about this book later i'm just gonna say sir my least favorite character my least favorite character and then the last book that I read in the month of July was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This is about a young boy who gets visited for a couple nights by a monster. This monster agrees to tell him three stories if the boy exchanges it for one. This really explores the, this boy's feelings on how he is dealing with his mother's illness and the world around them and how they are treating him nowadays. Now, I thought this book was magnificent but I think it really lacked in a lot of stuff where I think unless you have really identified with a lot of things that this boy is going through unless you've experienced some aspect of what he is experiencing in this book you are not getting the full picture there were a lot of things that I saw the reasons why he was angry that was more than just oh my mother's sick and I'm angry about this but he was angry because he didn't like how people pitied him he didn't like what people did to him as a result of this and he had very real reasons to be angry and to be frustrated with the world around him and it can't be boiled down to as simple as oh his mother's ill and he's struggling with it and I don't think some people will fully be able to understand those things unless they've experienced them and I think Patrick Ness should have put more time into writing the emotional empathic reasons for why this kid felt this way it was so that there could never be a chance that someone who didn't experience these things would look at him and be like oh I pity this kid or I feel bad for this kid because he's going through a hard time when there was a lot deeper thought into why he was reacting the way he was versus oh this is happening in my life so I'm going to lash out in these ways there was a lot deeper things going on and I feel like this book just barely grazed the surface of all of the intense emotions that could have been going on and all of the little subtle details that were hidden in the background but never pulled into the light so that you could fully understand the picture around you now for the month of August. In August, I participated in Tome Topple for the very first time. I really, really enjoyed it. Those were where most of my books came from. I really didn't have that many books that I read in the month of August. I was really busy with school and work and making sure that I would get all of my paperwork turned in on time and stuff like that. But I did love the books that I did read. So let's get into those. We have Seven Tears at High Tide by C.B. Lee. This was a very good book. It was, it's kind of a fluffy sort of romance book it is about a male silky which is this kind of mythological creature that can turn into a seal and a human and then this bisexual human boy and they have this summer romance now it is very clear that this is her first book it is her first book but the way that it is written you can see how this is not a fully developed writer yet i think it is still a very good book i don't think your expectations for shakespearean sort of writing should be all the way up here but i think for what it is it is very good i think there's a lot of stuff that could be worked on in this mainly because the way it foreshadows some things happening in this book are there but they're not fully tied in together the best way I could describe the way some pieces of the story fit together with others is like those cheap puzzles you buy from the dollar store or something and how you know the piece fits in that spot but you kind of have to smack it down before it fits because it fits but not perfectly and that's kind of how some of the elements and little side plots and things in this story felt where it was like main focus fluffy summer romance but we want to have these side pieces 
but it didn't perfectly tie in. Now, I can say for certain that C.B. Lee has become a far greater writer because she wrote Not Your Sidekick, which I absolutely thought was phenomenal and really, really good. But I think it's always interesting to see an author at their beginnings and to see what they will grow into. So I am happy I read this book, even if it wasn't a prime piece of writing it was still very very fun to read now for the gigantic graphic novel scott mcclough's the sculptor this is about a man called david smith and he's kind of in a low point in his life he is a sculptor but he is out of work he is not selling anything he is being broke he's going to be kicked out of his apartment he ends up making a deal with death for 200 days um left in his life but in exchange for selling all of those other days he will have this amazing superpower where anything as long as he wishes it to can be sculpted under his hand no matter what the material and he wants to use this power to get himself to create a legend for himself to become this legendary sculptor to be remembered forever for the great artworks and pieces that he put in to the world so this really has that realistic sense that every young adult has at some point where we feel like we're useless like we're not seeking our full potential that we need to make a name for ourselves to be successful to change the world in some sort of way and that's exactly what david smith is going through he's trying to make a name for himself but he has the most generic name in the world he's trying to show the world that he can create art and that he can like make his mark on it but no one really cares what he's doing or what his art is and he just feels underappreciated he feels like he's never gonna make it and that's mainly what this is about so of course there's like this little romance in it to like add to it what it feels like to be in love but not being sure that this relationship will go anywhere so like all those sorts of things it was very very fascinating it was i wouldn't say delightful to read but it was refreshing to read a story that covered so many things that i have felt at some point in time especially as a adult trying to make it in the world and the pressure you feel to make a name for yourself and to have some longevity in life. Next we have The Luminae Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the first book of course. I have never read this series before. I can't say I'm in love with this series. I hear this one is kind of so so comparative to the second one so I might try the second one. I'm not quite sure. This particular book is about two corporations who are kind of getting into a fight and not all out war. There are two young adults in here, old lovers, kind of current lovers, who end up getting them and their colony end up getting in between these two corporations and they are currently on ships fleeing from a corporate war but there is a disease spreading and it's kind of affecting all of the refugees and the people manning the ships so they're trying to figure out what's going on and who's hiding what and why they are in the situation that they are in at the moment i must say i did not like the characters i did not really care for them but i did like aiden aiden was fabulous but the other ones were kind of so so wasn't really a fan of them I do think this might be better with audiobook and the physical copy because there are some pages that do like weird swirlies and weird like little shape things and those are annoying to follow along because they are not linear so you're not quite sure what you're supposed to read first so if you read this I would follow that suggestion get the audiobook and read this the audiobook supposedly has a full cast so it might be a better way to read this that was one of the reasons why I wasn't a fan because I did not like those pages that were swirly. I'm sorry, I just skimmed over them and was like, well, I guess this page isn't important because I don't know how to read it, so I'm going to skip it. But other than that, Aiden was good. The last book that I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be Draw the Line by Lauren Lynn. This is about a kid and he loves drawing that's his whole life and he draws graphic novels and he draws about this character named graphite now he has a few problems in his life where he just keeps a lot of himself hidden from the world because he is scared and terrified of how the world has reacted and from the examples that he has been given they are very real fears so one of them is 
he loves drawing but one time he tried to show his pictures out to everyone and they basically told him he sucked and he was a horrible drawer so like now he can't share the art with his world and put his name on it because he doesn't want people to insult his artwork and to just call him a piece of crap because of that now the other bigger reason is he is also a homosexual in a society that is not that accepting of such so he keeps himself closeted so that he doesn't get beaten up and hurt and maimed and this becomes a very real fear to him when some a flamboyant gay gets hurt and beaten up right in front of his eyes and no one does anything not the cops not the educational system no one stands up for this other kid and our main man adrian he just kind of wants revenge he's like this isn't right it's not right that we live in a place where this is acceptable so he tries to take it in his own hands while still struggling with the fear that something horrible is going to happen to him because he's the same as this other kid in like some narrow definition and it just talks about that you can see the differing sides with not only the very bigoted awful people but also within his own friends with how they think he should deal with it versus how he should deal with it so like that's very interesting to see those like different ideas here's one problem how do we deal with it and to see those three different ways that people would deal with a the very same problem and you can't say one is right and one is wrong but just know it's frustrating that there's never just a oh this is the right answer you know that's how you fix all the world's problems it has pictures i like pictures it has like little pieces of his comic book that he draws that was really good so you know i like that those were all the books that i have for this wrap up of july and august because i'm a nub and i can't ever video and record and save things on time Hopefully this one gets edited before the start of September. I'm planning to edit it really, really soon. And as long as this video doesn't get corrupted and my computer doesn't act like a little asshole, you will be seeing this very soon. If any of the books that I've mentioned here are of any interest to you, comment down below and let me know. I am trying to get really caught up on my book opinions so you will be seeing these books sooner rather than later. I've been writing out what I want to say for other ones. I'm very sorry that I am so slow at this process. I just, I'm still learning so bear with me while I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing and you know that's just the way my life is. I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm gonna figure it out and I hope you're there with me. If you like what you're seeing here, you want to continue to see more, you want to eventually see all of those videos that I'm probably promising to eventually do, click all the bunny buttons down below. I really do appreciate it and goodbye internet.